Hello friends, welcome to the session on software construction essentials. In this session, we'll be discussing about introduction to computers. Friends, as we know that this is the first unit of uh, the course junior software developer. So here in the first unit, we start our journey of study or our journey of learning from the topic what we mean by computers. Now most of us are very familiar with the computers, but still we will see what is its importance and what are the different terms that are associated with the computer system. Also we will see what are the recent hardwares that are being available in the market. And then we will go on studying the different topics such as number systems, then computation of number systems, and then various mathematical terms that are associated with the computers. So friends, in this session, we will discuss what is computer, what are the characteristics of computer, and what are the different hardware terms that are associated with the computer system. Friends, as you know that I am recording this session for PSS Central Institute of Vocational Education. And this session is being recorded for the course Junior Software Developer. But the students from other courses can also make an access to these sessions in order to learn the computer science. So let us start the session and understand what we mean by a computer system. You will find that computer is just nothing but an electronic device. And this electronic device is able to perform many operations or many things. It will operate under the control of instructions and these instructions are stored into the memory of computer system. Computer system is such a, that it can accept the input or it, it can accept the data as an input. It will process the data and then it will process the data according to the specific rules or according to the specific instructions that are written in the program and then it will produce certain output and whatever the output is being produced, that output can be stored into the memory or you can store it on some other devices so that whenever you need, you can make use of this output. So computer is a basically digital machine and this digital machine will carry the various tasks. So as shown in this window, you can say that this is our computer system and here we will give the data as an input to the computer system. The data is being processed by this system and it will produce at the output and this output can be information. So whenever we have a raw data with us, we can process the raw data by using a computer system and then at the output we can generate the information. So whenever we think of any computer system, then we can think of the five functions that are associated with the computer system. The first one, it will take the data as the input and then this data or instruction will be stored into the memory and whenever we require this data or whenever we require this information, then that will be used by the computer system. It will process the data and then it will convert this data into the useful information. Say for example, when I have the mark score by the students in a class, then this is the raw data. When I process this data, then probably I will be in a position to decide who is the topper of the class or who has scored the lowest marks or how many students have scored above 90%. So such type of the information can be generated by making the use of the computer system. It will generate a definite output and you will find that these steps, whatever the functions that computer system do, all such functions can be controlled by using the computer system. So whenever we think of any computer system, then there are basically two terms that are associated with the computer system. The first term is being called as a hardware and the second term is being called as a software. So hardware is just nothing but you can say the physical elements that are actually present so that they can constitute the computer system. So all such physical elements are being called as a hardware of the computer system. For example, when I am delivering these sessions to you online, then I, I am making the use of iPad or I am making the use of this pencil. So this is just nothing but a hardware, I am making the use of it. And you will find that the software is basically a collection of computer data and instructions. So whenever I am writing some presentation or whenever I am executing some presentation, 
then that presentation software is present within this iPad and that is being executed. So, it presentation software basically consists of some data and it consists of some instructions and these instructions are executed sequentially. So, software is a logical kind of thing and hardware you can say is a physical kind of thing. So, whenever we think of a computer hardware, then it refers to the various components of computer system or various physical parts of the computer system. Say for example, we can have a monitor of a computer system, keyboard, mouse, printer, power supply, SMPS, we can have a RAM, we can have a processor inside a computer system, we have a motherboard, we have optical drive or we have a hard disk drive. So, all these are the physical components that are connected to the system and therefore, they are being called as the hardware of your computer system. So, inside the computer system many times we have a motherboard, we have a chipset. So, everything that constitute the hardware of the computer system. So, these are the physical objects means these physical objects you can see, you can touch them, but software is not that kind of thing. You cannot touch a software, but of course, you can have a feeling of the software. So, the input devices are those which are used in order to transfer the data to the computer system. So, whenever humans interact with the computer system, then for their interaction what we need is the input device. The most common input device that is being used is the keyboard and the mouse. So, whenever you want to operate your computer system, what you need is a mouse, what you need is a keyboard so that you can interact with the computer system and that is being called as an input device. And whenever we have some output generated by the computer system, then that can be displayed on the screen. So, your screen can be an output device or whenever you want to print it on the paper, then that printer can be an output device. And you will find that the data whatever you feed to the computer system will be processed by the computer system and it will generate certain output. So, the output device will convert electronically generated information into the human readable form. And you will find that inside the computer system, there is some processor and this processor is being called as the central processing unit. So, you can say that the CPU of the computer system is the brain of your computer system. In, in human body, we have our brain and our brain is very important in human body. Similarly, in computer system, CPU is the brain and it is very important because it is responsible for all functions of the computer system. It is responsible for all processes in the computer system and you will find that the CPU is the most important element of your computer system. So, this CPU basically what it consists of, you will find that the CPU will consist of a control unit, a arithmetic and logic unit, in short we call it as an ALU and then you will find that it has a memory unit and there are certain input devices connected to it and there are certain output devices connected to it. So, this is you can say a block diagram of your computer system where the input device is connected to the CPU, there is some output device connected to the CPU and inside the CPU we have control unit, arithmetic and logic unit and then the memory unit. The arithmetic and logic unit will execute all the arithmetic and logical instructions and that is the reason it is being called as arithmetic and logic unit. The control unit will coordinate all the components of the computer system. The memory is there and in the memory, we can have the different types of memory such as random access memory RAM or read only memory ROM, where you will find that whenever we store some information, then it is being stored in the RAM for a short duration of time. So, random access memory is a computer memory that is responsible for storing the data on a temporary basis. Read only memory or ROM will store the data permanently in your computer system. Now, whenever we think of a memory, then you will find that the memory can be represented by a unit called as a bit, where one bit will stand for one zero or one. Then the group of four bits is being called as a nibble. Whenever we have a group of eight bits, then that is being called as a byte or one byte. Whenever we have 2 raised to 10 bytes that is 1024 byte, then it is being called as a 1 kilobyte. Whenever we have 2 raised to 20 bytes, then that is being called as a 1 megabyte. So, 1 megabyte is just nothing but you can say 1 kilobyte into 1 kilobyte. 
then we have a 1 gigabyte. So, 1 gigabyte you can say is just nothing but 1 megabyte into 1 kilobyte. Then we have a terabyte. So, 1 terabyte is just nothing but 1 gigabyte into 1 kilobyte. So, you will find that the memory goes on increasing and when the memory goes on increasing, it means that the large amount of data can be stored into the computer system. You will find that after terabyte, we have a petabyte, we have a hexabyte and we have a zettabyte also, where the storage capacity is very large. You will find that the software, as far as the software is being concerned, uh, the software of a computer system can be classified into categories such as the system software and application software. The system software you can say is a software that is being required for proper operation of the computer system and the application software is that software that is being used for the generation of the output for specific application. Say for example, you can say that the presentation software is an application software or the operating system that is being used for iPad or your desktop computer system, you can say that it is a system software. So, basically both the types of the software are needed for your operation of the computer system. If you have hardware and if there is no software, then you will find that the computer system will be of no use to you. So, if you want to make an effective and efficient use of your computer system, then the software must be there. The only hardware requirement is not fulfilled, it will not be sufficient and you need a software along with the hardware in order to perform any job by using the computer system. There are certain latest hardwares available. Say for example, whenever we consider the processors, then you will find that AMD Ryzen 7000 series is there where the CPU deliver improved energy efficiency performance and these processors are used for gaming productivity and content creation. Intel Core 14 generation uh, CPUs are used, these are the, they have the hybrid architecture, uh, they integrate the AI accelerator as well and they support the DDR5. So, you will find that they access the faster memory and peripherals. The graphics processing units such as GPUs, NVIDIA RTX 5000 series is being used, it is being built on the advanced architecture. Then you will find that the AMD RX 7000 series is also available that can be used for the gaming purpose or some professional work. Then you will find that there are SSDs, uh, 5.0 SSDs are used, solid state drivers, they provide the ultra fast read write speed and they are used for gaming, video editing and large data transfers. Then you will find that there are DDR5 RAM available which can be used for mobiles and that can be used for laptops also. You will find that there are number of uh, modern displays are available of which the resolution is in the 4K or 8K. So, there are monitors or displays available where the resolution is uh, 4K or 8K and there you will find that uh, they have the uh, enhanced color and contrast. Then ultra wide monitors are available for multitasking, liquid cooling AIOs are available with RGB advanced design, then, then graphene based cooling pads are also available. There are certain latest motherboards available that supports the DDR5 uh, RAM, then mini ITX boards are available and peripherals, uh, mechanical keyboards, then enhanced customization for the gaming purposes are also available. So, the hardware is changing, the software is changing. Every day you will find that the latest hardware, the latest software is coming into the market and people are developing it like anything and people are making the use in variety of application. Now, you will find that there are certain AR, VR headsets available that can be added to your computer system. Uh, you can make the use of uh, compact modular P PSUs, you can make the use of latest networking hardware in order to have a connectivity better connectivity of the, internet. of the internet. Thank you friends for viewing the session. Hopefully, you have understood what we mean by a computer system, what is the block diagram of computer system, what is hardware, what is software and the different modern or latest hardware and platforms that are available with us. Thank you all for viewing the session.